to start our webinar today, I'd like to talk to you about phosphorus, a nutrient that for farmers has come to have kind of a divided reputation, uh, kind of like the main character in the classic horror story, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In the story, Dr. Jekyll is a, a respectable gentleman. He is friendly and sociable and respectable. And likewise, phosphorus is a respectable nutrient. Phosphorus is required by all species for bone formation, for buffer systems to maintain the pH in our bodies, and also for energy metabolism as a key compound component of ATP and other energetic compounds. Most of the phosphorus that is consumed by animals, by livestock, and others is in the grain and forages, and many dairy rations and beef rations are also supplemented with minerals, such as dicalcium phosphate. Again, phosphorus is a respectable nutrient. On the other hand, in the story, Dr. Jekyll is transformed into the evil Mr. Hyde, revealing and, and acting on his, his darker impulses. Phosphorus isn't evil, but it does have some negative environmental consequences. In excess in surface water, uh, it causes eutrophication of fresh water or an algae bloom. And when the algae dies, it sucks the oxygen out of the water, suffocating the fish, leading to fish kills. So there is this two-sided uh, nature to phosphorus. Eutrophication from excess phosphorus has been, is often associated with animal agriculture because manure, nitrogen, and phosphorus are in imbalance to each other relative to crop needs. So when we apply manure to meet the fertilizer, the nitrogen needs of the crop, we're over-applying phosphorus. Over time, phosphorus accumulates and can run off from saturated soil even without erosion. The data shown here is a summary of all of the soil samples submitted to the state lab from Rockingham County, Virginia in the years 2007 to 2010. Rockingham County is significant because it is our number one dairy county in the state. It is number one for poultry. It has a huge broiler industry. Um, the sample submitted to the state during this three-year period and really most of the three-year periods going back um, a decade or more show that almost 90% of the soils in the county are high or very high in phosphorus. And certainly they need no additional phosphorus application to support crop growth. As this data from the U.S. Geological Survey shows, in areas of intensive animal agriculture, livestock are the source for a significant portion of phosphorus loading. And so on this map, areas of blue, animal agriculture, is not a particularly significant source of phosphorus losses, usually because there aren't very many cows there or there are an awful lot of people there that are contributing to phosphorus. But in areas of intensive animal agriculture, the panhandle of Texas, the eastern shore of Maryland, uh, right here in Virginia, that's where Rockingham County is located, animal agriculture is the source of more than 50% of the phosphorus losses. There are a variety of strategies that farmers can use and are using to manage nutrient balance on their farms, reducing phosphorus losses. These strategies include cropping, herd management strategies, manure treatment, manure export. Today we're focused on dietary nutrient management, reducing nutrient losses from farms by addressing the front end of the system. And we've known for some time that we can reduce the phosphorus content of manure and therefore reduce phosphorus application to the land uh, through dietary nutrient management. Um, we can reduce this excretion significantly by reducing overfeeding. This figure portrays the very first research study I did when I came to Virginia Tech uh, about 15 years ago now, looking at the relationship between phosphorus intake and phosphorus excretion in early lactation dairy cows. They were fed diets containing one of three concentrations of phosphorus. At the time, we thought that 0.52, that intermediate, we thought that was about what these cows required. And then I went as low as I could get it, 0.34, and I also went up to 0.67. We were seeing some of those levels in the industry. And on the y-axis is phosphorus excretion, 
And what we see is about the nicest linear relationship you'll ever see uh, in a biological system. As we increased feeding of dietary phosphorus, every extra gram of phosphorus that we fed came right out the other end in manure. Did the cows no good at all? There were no differences in performance in these cows. And several other studies have shown the same thing. Overfeeding phosphorus increases phosphorus excretion dramatically. We have made a lot of progress on dairy farms implementing this strategy, simply reducing overfeeding of phosphorus. Most of the progress has been made by pulling mineral phosphorus out of the diet. We're learning, we have learned, we know that uh, in many cases there was too much of that in the diet, and so pulling that mineral phosphorus out was an easy first step, and, and we made a lot of progress that way. But there are still questions, there are still some challenges. Um, we don't really well understand the degradation or the digestion of phytate and other organic forms of phosphorus by the cow. With increasing use of byproduct feeds that contain a great deal of organic phosphorus, we're hearing questions about the availability of the phosphorus in those feeds. And those questions led directly to this research that we're going to talk about today.